Good morning, Claire. It's Wednesday, April 18th. Wait, we're talking about our... Let me get my nice jacket on. That's better. So today we're talking about the art of Louise Nevelson. Louise Nevelson. What could I possibly say about the art of Louise Nevelson? Hi, she's Jewish. She must be from Long Island. <gasps> Stunning! Absolutely exquisite! It is undoubtedly the defining work of our generation. I think the white color gives an air of innocence, while the placement of the columns gives a surprisingly varnished quality that displays the inherent sexuality of an all men. Yes, and I think the details from within the chapel are not only a commentary on religion, but the mechanics of love and marriage. It's smooth, yet rough. I see a rhinoceros. Basic facts, contrary to the bourgeois artsy couple's belief, she wasn't from Long Island, but she was Jewish. She was born Louise Berlioski in Kiev, Russia in 1899. Her mother was a stay-at-home mom and her father was a timber merchant, which might explain her use of wood in her later works. In 1902, her father left for the United States for work and it was rumored that little Louise was so traumatized she went mute for six months. In 1905, the rest of the family joined him in Rockland, Maine, and as a young child, Louise decided she wanted to pursue art and she was constantly drawing and painting. Okay, flash forward some years. Up to, say, eh, 1920, she marries rich shipping tycoon Charles Nevelson. Together they have a son who later grew up to also be a sculptor. However, she didn't want to live up to his expectations of becoming a socialite wife, and so they divorce. And all I have to say is, you go, girl. But that's okay, because in 1931, she drops her kid off with her parents, and then she goes off to Munich to study under Hans Hoffmann, who taught her how to use a limited color palette in her works. Here's 1958 Sky Cathedral, 1960's Royal Tide One, and Dawn's Wedding Feast from 1959, but more about that in a second. She returned a year later to the States and ended up in New York where she befriended a ton of these famous painters, one of them being Diego Rivera, who she helped create murals under the Works Progress Administration. She was later rumored to be having an affair with Diego Rivera, which unsurprisingly caused some strife between him and Frida Kahlo, an artist, coincidentally, which Louise admired. Whether she admired Frida for her artwork or for bagging such a loyal husband such as Diego Rivera, I don't know. Although her personal life has been messy and all over the place, her works, particularly her room size sculptures, were detailed, uniform, and precise. She one of her most famous pieces, and incidentally the one that launched her career, Dawn's Wedding Feast. She debuted for the 1959 New York MoMA exhibition, 16 Americans, and as it was room size, it was massive. Louise used discarded wood and painted them all white to create 16 standalone sculptures to represent a chapel, a wedding cake, the bride and groom, they look so happy, and you know, other like hanging and standing ones to resemble guests. The use of white clearly tied into the marriage theme, which was a departure from her usual black tones. The use of white along with the word dawn in the title symbolized new hope and promise. Some took it to symbolize her own life considering she was divorced and subsequently married to her work, but it could also be used as a metaphor for her artistic process. She took pieces of wood that nobody wanted and shaped and spray painted them so that its true form was hidden, hence disguising its original purpose. Sounds like another work we studied in class. Oh right. But Claire, I want to know why Louise Nevelson is considered art. I understand her works have a high level of artistry, but does that make it art? What makes her work so different from that of, say, Duchamp, for example? I notice she's not as highly debated as that of some of her male contemporaries, so to some extent does that make her outside the male-dominated sphere of artistic canon? Or does controversy make the artist? Just some things to keep in mind. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on her contribution to the feminist art movement. Claire, I will see you on Wednesday.